Hey guys, welcome back. In this one, we are going to be actually constructing uh, the first part of our building. But before we do that, we need to talk about um, exactly what we're doing when we're building this procedural building. Um, in Unreal, we like we know that it's a 3D space. Let me switch that to black. We know that it's a 3D space, so we have the X, Y, and Z axis. Um, and with this 3D space, we want to create an object. Now, this object, which is our building, um, we're building it in a bunch of small um, other objects. We're actually we're going to be using just blocks. So I'm going to just block it out like this. And then this block over here has a X, Y, and Z component to it, right? Even though here it's represented 2D. What essentially we're going to do is we're going to start this and we're going to say that we need to stack it in the Y direction. Then we need to also stack it for every single stack in the Y direction. We also need to stack in the X direction. So now if you can imagine we have um, these stacks working like this. And then for every layer of these stacks, we also need to stack it in the Z direction. So it's essentially taking this thing, treating it like a one big plane, because it's stacked in the X and Y, and then we start stacking it in the Z. Um, in a programming sense, this is called a nested loop. We're actually going to be using nested for loops. And what that simply means for those who are new to programming, is uh, a nested loop is, let's say you have our three components, which are our X, our Y, and our Z, in this case. Um, or really, you could do this for anything. It doesn't need to be X, Y, and Z. But for every time this loop runs, for every time this loop runs, let's say this, this loop over here is going to run two times. This one over here, let's say it's going to run like three times, and let's say four times. Um, so what this is saying is that for every time this loops, it's going to run the one that's inside of it, and then every single time this one loops, it's going to run that's in, it's going to run what's inside of that one. So for every cycle of this, it's going to run this three times. So essentially, this this Y part here is going to be three times two times that is running. So it's going to run a total of six times because you have two components here. And for the Z, this is essentially going to be 4 times 3 times 2 for the amount of times that Z is going to be running. And that's how we're going to be setting it up. Um, by doing this, we're essentially going to be creating our X, our Y, and our Z. In this case, our... our um, um, so those are the three components that we're going to do. Now to actually do some Unreal stuff. Okay, uh, first thing we're going to do is go to, well, first go into your like Blueprints folder, and then we're going to create a Blueprint class with Actor, because we don't want any other stuff, because um, we're, well, we're creating our own class here. Let's call it Proc Build. Ding. It's probably a better... Um, <clears throat> Now, in the viewport, we're actually going to do a couple things a little bit different. Um, we need to first get rid of this, our default scene component. Um, what I end up using was just this uh, scene capture component, just to clear the thing. And underneath this, we're going to put a bunch of instant static mesh. Now, the reason why I'm, we're using the instant static mesh is... Um, is that these meshes, they're made to be dynamic, and you can spawn a lot of them without using too much actual memory and too much space. So this allows you to generate a whole bunch of blocks to create like a floor, because if, if you think about it, um, this is the X and the Y over here. So if we have a 5 by 5, you have 25 blocks, if these get rendered, uh, rendered as a normal static mesh, it's going to use a lot of memory. And so the instant static mesh uses less. 
So let's call it just like floor. Um, then over here we're actually going to put our block type. I found that if you go over here and drag one of these BSP blocks here, right click and go to uh, where is it? Huh. Okay, don't do that. Never mind. Not BSP. Type in cube. We're using this cube. Um, then if you right click here and go to find and content browser, this will give you access to the engine content where our basic shapes are. And this is the one that I actually use for my building. So now that we have this out and we can actually see it, we can go in here and type in cube. And then look over here how it says um, engine basic shapes. And that's the one that I used. Now it's okay that it's not showing up right now because we need to actually initialize our instance. To create the building, we're not using the event graph. We're actually going to be using the construction script because we want every time when we compile, we want our building to change. And this will be true for when we're moving it and whatnot. So our floor, if we drag it over here, and then we do um, add instance. And we can just set the transform to the current actor. So just type in actor. Um, now you should be able to see the block. And this is how big of a block we're going to be using uh, to start with. And you can change the material to whatever you want. Now one of the beautiful things about using this instant static mesh is that it's you can essentially operate it similar to a voxel system, which is um, what the currently what the building actually kind of looks like. It looks like it's a voxel building because it's generated by a whole bunch of different cubes. However, you can change this to whatever you want. So if you want your bil your building to be just a whole bunch of cylinders, you can change it to that. Or uh, if you decide to after this uh, after this tutorial series, you want to go ahead and uh, make your building really cool. You can make your code slightly more complex and come up with rules saying that if it's an edge, use this um, static mesh. If it is a particular portion of the building, use this. And you can basically just keep it going and going and going until you have this very high detailed, nice looking building. Okay. So now we have this, we see how this works, and we see that it does generate the cube. Now let's go into the actual programming portion of it. First thing that we need to do is we need to create um, a couple components, a couple variables over here. Um, first, we'll do max in the x direction, uh, make it editable. our max in the y direction and our max in the z direction. This is so that we actually get a, uh, a reference of what we want. And we can just set this to whatever dimension we want. So let's just put the defaults as 5, 5, and 5 just so that we can see it do it 5 times. Um, now let's just kind of jump right into the for loop and see how they work. So if you type in for loop, uh, you'll see uh, this one over here, which creates the for loop. Now a for loop in programming sense, um, you have your first index, which is where you start off, your last index where you end, your loop, which is the actual loop itself, the index stands for which which one it's at right now, and then completed is the end. Um, and also in programming, you always start off with zero, and then you end with whatever you're counting to minus one, so that you can get what you're counting to. So zero to nine instead of zero to ten, because otherwise you'll get eleven units. 
So we'll do uh, max x minus 1. And then for our um, our second loop, we're doing um, another for loop. And we're basically going to repeat this process a couple more times. So please bear with me as I'm doing this. Also, make sure to attach it to loop body instead of completed. Completed means, or well, it means when the loop is complete, when you're done counting all the parts that you want to count. Okay, so we have our nested loop over here, and that is the core of this building. Um, and then uh, at this point, we have our. Uh, we also need to create one called tile size. Um, also make that public. And all tile size is, is it um, tells you how big this block is. So this block is actually um, in the viewport. Oh, you can't see it anymore. But the, the cube that we're using is about 100 units wide. Um, so our tile size, I'm setting this to 100 so that we can put it exactly next to each other. If you make the tile size bigger, then you'll have spaces in between. And if it's smaller, then it's collapsing onto itself. Um, so what we're doing for that is we're taking the, the x and y tile size. So we're, this is where we're actually going to be using the index. Um, that times the tile size. And then we're also going to be doing this one for the y. Index times the tile size. And same thing for the Z. This is so that we can get positions proper um, properly on this. Um, we are going to be making a vector. So make vector. Pipe those into the X, Y, and Z components. And then you can stick this vector to make a transform. Um, and just leave the rotation and scale alone. We don't need to worry about that. Um, and then we can add our, our uh, instance just to see what we got. So type in add, or just instance is probably better. Now, once again, um, you want to pipe this through loop. You don't want to use completed. And then plug this in, compile, and you will see that we have a solid cube and you'll see that they're actually made up of the individual components notice this this block right here now watch what happens when I make the tile size a little bit bigger let's make it uh, 150 you'll see this and it looks very cool but this is what the tile sizes does it um, e each of these middle sections will be 50 uh, because this is 100 so if you make it 100 then it looks like a solid cube and that is in essence what our building creation is we just now put a whole bunch of if statements and other conditionals to um, to like make this block a little bit different so we can like say um, skipping every one turn that into a window 
Um, then we can also say only get the extremes of this and make the inside hollow because right now this is a solid 5x5x5 five by five by five cube. Um, so that will actually be coming next in the next tutorial. It's hollowing out this cube and actually having a space to run inside of. Alright, thanks for watching guys.